So I'm going to draw four graphs here. And from these four graphs, only one of those graphs, the inverse would be a function. So how can we tell just by looking at these four graphs that the only one of these four graphs whose inverse, if I flip it over the line y equals x, if I switch the x and the y values, how come is it only this one where the inverse will be a function. All of these ones to begin with are functions. Okay? So remember a function, all of these would pass the vertical line test. If I take a vertical line and I draw it and I go through the first one, it only hits one point at a time as you go from left to right. Sure enough, same thing with the next one. Same thing with the next one. If we come down here, it only hits one point as you go from left to right. Those are all functions. But if I do the inverse, only the one circled would be a function. OK, so if we're doing a horizontal line test on, whoa, there's another line. OK. If we did a horizontal line test on this one, do you see this one hits two points? This one hits three points. In. This one, however, if I slide it all the way up, only hits one. Whereas this one, there's places where it hits like five of them. And what happens when you do a flip over the line y equals x? If you switch the x and the y, remember that vertical lines, when we label them, are always x equals something. And horizontal lines, when we label them, are always y equals something. And if you switch the x's and y's, horizontal lines will become vertical lines, and vertical lines will become horizontal lines. And so if our original function if our original function doesn't pass the horizontal line test, when you reflect that, it's not going to pass the horizontal, I mean the vertical line test in the inverse. So we can write this out and we can say, when is an inverse of a function also a function? When it passes. the horizontal line test. So let's go to example three. Example three, looking right now, we can tell that our graph doesn't pass the horizontal line test. If we did the inverse of x minus 1 squared plus 3, it would be a parabola that's turned on its side, and it would not pass the vertical line test and would not be a function. So what we do in math is sometimes we take our original graph and say, how can I restrict the domain? How can I only take part of this graph so that when I do the inverse, it becomes a function. So for example, can you see that um, can you see that if I erased that part of the graph, then it would pass the horizontal line test? Or if I decided to erase that part of the graph, it would pass the horizontal line test. With a parabola, if you think about your vertex, and our vertex here is at 1, 3, 
if you use your vertex as sort of the point where I either consider the values to the right of my vertex or the values to the left of my vertex, then I'm going to restrict the domain so that it passes the vertical line test. So we've determined two ways. I'm going to write one here and two here. One of them is we take the x values when they're bigger than or equal to 1. Another way is when we take the x values less than 1. Now, I, it doesn't matter where you include the equal sign, but I don't like to overlap them. So if I said x is bigger than or equal to 1 on 1, then on the other one I just said what's left is when x is less than 1. Okay? We want to write the equation of the inverse each time, and we're going to use a graph to illustrate this. And sometimes the graph is going to help us. Now, how do we find an equation of an inverse? That's algebraically. First thing we did was we switched the x and the y's. So I'm going to take my equation, y equals, and I'm going to rewrite it here as x equals y minus 1. And I'm doing it off to the side because I want to write the actual equation that goes with number 1 and the actual equation that goes with number 2. Actually, I'm going to add the equal sign on both. They're not going to be too particular about that. So I'm going to switch x and y, which means I'll still have the squared plus 3. And now we have to solve for y. Solving for y, I would subtract 3 on both sides. Square root both sides, and don't forget the plus or minus. And finally, move the 1 over. And at this point, you might want to write two separate equations. So I'm going to branch off here and branch off here. I'll write one equation, y equals, with the plus sign. So that'll be x minus 3 plus 1. And the other equation with the minus sign, so it'll be negative x minus 3 plus 1. So we switch the x and y, solve for y. That gives us two equations. What we have to determine is which equation goes with part 1 and which equation goes with part 2. So I'm going to highlight things here. I'm going to take out my highlighter. I'm going to highlight part 1 in green. And that's when x is bigger than or equal to 1. And I'm going to highlight that part of my graph in green. And I'm going to highlight part 2 in blue. And I am going to highlight that on here in blue. Because if I just thought about the green part, it would pass the horizontal line test. If I just thought about the blue part, it would pass the horizontal line test. Now, when I switch x and y, so I'm going to think about a bunch of points on here. The vertex, 1, 3, that one's going to go to 3, 1. So here it is, 1, 3. And now, I'll just label that one point because it's the vertex in red. It changes to 3, 1. On the green half of my graph, do you see that you have this point here at 2, 4? So we would have a point at 4, 2. We have this point here at 3, 7. So we would have this point here at 7, 3. So I'm going to label this part in green because it matches up with the green part of my graph. 
And in blue, we have the point 0, 4, so that would be 4, 0. We have the point negative 1, 7, so I would have 7, negative 1. And my blue part, which I labeled in blue, is on the bottom. So now we have to determine which graph, which equation, which we solved for down here, which of these equations goes with which. A couple of ways that you can do that. Okay? The first way, you can use your transformations. Can you see that your green graph is your square root graph that's been moved three to the right and one up with no reflections? So when we look at our equations, which one has no reflections? The first one that's listed. So we could write, I'll write it in green, y equals the square root of x minus three, three to the right, plus one, one up. For the second one then, can you see that the blue graph has been flipped over the x-axis, has had a vertical reflection? And so in order to have a vertical reflection, it needs a negative outside of the function. So one way you can figure out which equation goes with which graph is to think about transformations. Another way that you can find out which equation goes with which graph is to think about, well, inverses, the x's and the y's switch. They switch everywhere. And so if your domain, your restricted domain, is x is bigger than or equal to 1, that means for this equation, this first equation, that my range has to be bigger than or equal to 1. And that has to happen when this is positive. And for the second one, if x is less than or equal to 1, that means this equation, the y values has to be less than or equal to negative 1. And so that has to be a part where this is negative in order for that to happen. So another way of looking at it that can help you figure out which equation goes with which. So we restricted the domain in two ways, highlighted that in green, highlighted that in blue. With a parabola, you'll always restrict the domain based on your vertex, because your vertex is where the green part passes the horizontal line test and the other part passes the horizontal line test. After we did that, we used algebra to find both equations and then we matched both equations with their proper ones. Color coded it here so the green graph matches with the highlighted green, the blue graph matches with the highlighted blue. Questions for practice on this one? are 10 and 12.